Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I'm coming to you from Hinokicho Park by Tokyo Midtown in the Roppongi district of Tokyo. It's a very beautiful and warm summer-like day here today. Uh, the kids got out of school about an hour and a half ago so there's quite a few of them running around here. So it may get a little bit noisy, uh, not to mention the landscaping which is also going on. Uh, hopefully it won't be so noisy that uh, you can't hear me. Uh, such a beautiful week in Tokyo this uh, this week uh, compared to last week when it was so cold and rainy. On the weekend we took a visit out to the Odaiba district which is a shopping and entertainment area uh, built on a man-made beach on the other side of Tokyo Bay. It's a very fun place to visit because there's so many things to see and do there and it's probably the best place to get a really beautiful uh, view of the skyline of Tokyo. Normally Odaiba is a very busy place and there are lines in front of everything, the stores and shops are very crowded, but uh, for the obvious reasons it's still rather quiet. Normally at least half the people who are at Odaiba on any day are foreign tourists, uh, mostly from other parts of Asia, but quite a few from America and Europe. But as Japan still has not resumed uh, flights of foreign visitors into the country, we don't have any of these people here. And a lot of the local people are still kind of self-isolating. So it was a very quiet day in Odaiba. So uh, we were able to uh, enjoy the restaurants and shopping without having to wait any in any lines or anything like that. Uh, if you do happen to come to Tokyo, you really have to visit Odaiba to get, uh, you know, to get some really wonderful views of the city. Uh, they've been recently uh, renovating the oceanfront and the beach. Uh, this was in preparation for the Olympics this, this summer. Uh, due to the, uh, uh, I guess, postponement of the Olympics and such, they're going to be a little bit delayed in getting the waterfront renewed and everything. But uh, hopefully by the end of summer or fall, everything should be uh, back to normal and people should be coming to visit again. Anyway, uh, today's video is one which I received a couple of requests for and that was about the Canon F1 35mm SLR camera. The Canon F1 was Canon's first professional quality, uh, or I should say successful professional quality SLR camera. Back in 1959, Canon uh, introduced a 35mm SLR camera called the Canon Flex uh, RP. And like the Nikon F, it featured a removable uh, penta prism and Canon had uh, intended to produce a metered prism and a number of other accessories for uh, the Canon Flex, but unfortunately there were technical problems in delays and since the accessories were not available in a, in a timely manner, the camera didn't take off in sales and after a short production run it was discontinued. And Canon's uh, only professional quality 35mm film camera was the Canon 7 rangefinder camera. But uh, by 1971, uh, Canon had gotten their act together and they decided to make a camera which would compete with Nikon on a head-to-head -head basis. And the Canon F1 was the result. If you look at the Canon F1 from the top, it looks a little bit uh, similar to the Nikon F or Nikon F2. It has the wonderful angular prism on it and a very similar control layout. And if you look at it on this side, if you were just looking at this part of the camera and you didn't know any better, you might think you were looking at the top of a Nikon F or F2. Uh, but there were some improvements that the Canon F1 had that the Nikon F2 did not have. And mainly that was that it had a built-in light meter. Uh, the Ca Nikon F2 was a wonderful camera, a very rugged and professional quality camera, and pretty much indestructible, but it did not have a built-in light meter. In order to have light metering on the F2, you had to get the photomic uh, prism with a built-in light meter. And then you could, uh, you know, then it, it offered metering capability, and with another accessory you could use the, which, which would automatically switch the shutter for you, you could have shutter priority automatic operation. Uh, Canon had a similar system with their uh, EE servo finder where if you attach the finder and took off this cover here You could operate the camera in shutter priority mode That is you set the shutter speed and the camera would automatically choose the best aperture Let's go ahead and take a look at the the main features and functions of the Canon F1 starting at the top And as I said, this is the very Nikon uh, style or Nikon copy uh, film right rewind knob and a flash mounting system. Uh, here we have the viewfinder which you can remove by pressing in the tabs on either side and just sliding it rearward. Uh, Canon 
produced a wide number of focusing screens for the F1 system. When I got this camera, it happened to have one for passport photos, if you can imagine that. When I, I can't it's hard to believe that at one time people used 35 millimeter cameras to take passport photos. Uh, here we have the uh, shutter speed knob and we have the adjusting ring for setting the film speed which you operate by pulling up on the outside of the shutter speed dial and turning until the numbers in the window match the film that you have loaded in the camera. Uh, here we have the shutter release which accepts a standard uh, uh, shutter release cable and of course the film winding and shutter charging knob. There were two ver variations of the early uh, Canon F1. This is, an er this is the earliest variation which you can identify because it has a brass uh, film winding and shutter charging lever. After a few years uh, Canon introduced an improved model called the F1N. And you can tell that camera because it has a plastic tip on the film winding lever but other than that it's pretty much the same as the earlier version. On the back of the camera we have a switch on this side which you turn downward to turn on the light meter, switch it off by turning it to the center, and on the top there's a battery check system. Uh, to check the battery in a Canon F1 you have to set the film speed to ISO 100 and set the shutter speed to 1 2,000th of a second and then turn the switch up to the check uh, mark uh, in the upward position and then look through the viewfinder. Uh, the meter needle should line up with the uh, battery check indicator built in on the inside of the light meter. When you're not using the Canon F1, make sure to turn the light meter off. When I got this particular camera, it had an old MR9 battery installed in it and the battery was still good. And I used the camera for about three years before the battery finally gave out. And that's despite the fact that I almost always forgot to turn off the light meter when I wasn't using it. Uh, on the front here we have the self timer and uh, odd kind of release system. The bayonet release which came on Canon's earlier uh, say Canomatic FL and FD series lenses. And on the bottom here we have a removable or detachable uh, cover. If you're going to use one of the motor drives which were produced for the uh, Canon F1 you have to remove the bottom cover and keep it in the same place, safe place. Uh, to remove the bottom cover, you unscrew uh, the battery chamber cap, you take off the cap and simply lift off the cover and then attach your motor drive. Uh, unlike uh, cameras like by Nikon or like the Nikon F2 or Olympus later OM1s, uh, you, you had to remove the bottom cover. Uh, this was something the Canon did away with with their new F1 which was introduced in 1981. What I like best about the night, or excuse me, the Canon F1 is the FD lens mount. I like this because the FD lenses were made in a ridiculous amount of focal lengths. They're not not quite as many as say the Nikon AI or uh, AIS lenses, but a really huge number. And these lenses are quite easy to find, and they are not expensive. A very clean 50 millimeter f1.4 lens sells for about forty-five dollars or so, and most of the other lenses are not expensive. Some of the lenses are a little bit uncommon and uncollectible, but there aren't many of those. Most of the lenses that you're going to do a lot of shooting with with a uh, Canon F1 are not uh, expensive at all. My favorite lens for these cameras, and the reason why I still own a Canon F1, is uh, the Canon 35mm F2 concave lens. Uh, this lens was introduced uh, uh, not uh, around the same time that the F1 was introduced, and the early versions had a chrome nose. You can identify the, uh, the concave lenses easily by looking at the front of the lens and it's dished inward. Any 35mm f2 lens with a chrome nose is a concave lens and after a while these were improved to SSC lenses which uh, featured a superior coating and a black uh, ring on the front or a black nose but were still a concave design. And after a few years of production, uh, Canon moved to a conventional design with a, a normal non-concave front lens element. And then after a few years, they introduced the new FD lenses, which didn't have the old style bayonet lens mount on them. I love the Canon concave lens because it has a wonderful contrast and it's wonderfully sharp. 
and I've shot any number of lenses from any number of uh, camera companies and the Canon 35mm f2 concave is still hands down my favorite lens. Uh, they become kind of expensive in recent years as their reputation has grown and good ones in Japan sell for about $200. Uh, the later lenses aren't quite as good as the concave lenses. They sell for usually less than $100. Uh, the new FD it didn't have the concave lens or the thorium glass like the earlier concave lenses, but it featured superior glass and better uh, manufacturing uh, standards. So it's, it's almost as good a lens as the concave lens. It doesn't have the same contrast as the F2 lens, but still a really good lens. And that would be my second best choice for the 35 millimeter F2 lens if I couldn't find one of the old, say, chrome nose 35 millimeter F2 lenses. Uh, these cameras are quite wonderful to shoot. Uh, when I first got this camera, uh, it came with a 55 millimeter F1.2 lens and it was fitted with one of Canon's motor drives and battery packs, which made it really a, a kind of heavy package to, uh, to tote around and shoot with. But I, I did use the camera quite a lot, wandering around Chiba in the countryside and taking a lot of photos, and I really loved it. And I could see why the F1 became such a popular camera with so many people. Anyway, I'm running out of time here. I've got to get out and I've got to go pick up my uh, dog from the puppy school. Today's his first day in school. And I hope you did a good job while he was there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about the Canon F1, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing a vintage Japanese camera, I sell these in my Etsy and eBay stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. Uh, I am now shipping to all countries again. Shipping isn't as fast as it was uh, before the, uh, the virus uh, pandemic, but at least now I can ship to just about everywhere. It's taking about two weeks or so. And once flights begin to resume, then uh, shipping will become as fast as it used to be. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and please tune in again soon.